want to greet every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Blessing Dominic and I come from uh, Hope Chapel of Ministries in Omojapri. And I thank God for the grace to minister to you who are watching and me. I welcome you that we begin this journey. The Bible says that Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Lord. And today, I have the word from the Lord, and I want to speak in the subject, Obedience for Great Harvest. Obedience for Great Harvest. And I want to read the Bible in the book of Luke chapter number 5. And God is going to bless us. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter number 5 and verse 1. And it happened that while the people were pressing around him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake. The fishermen had left the them and they were washing their nets and they entered one of the boats the one belonging to Simon and they asked him to put out a little from the land and they sat down and they told the people from the boat now when he had finished speaking he said to Simon put out into deep water and let down your net for a catch. And the Simon started answering, said to him, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they netted a great, a great number of fish and their net broke and they signaled to their partners who were in the other boat to come and help them and they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink when Simon Peter saw this he fell down at, his, at Jesus' feet saying Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all who were with him, and all who were with him at the catch of fish they had taken. As also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. And Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and they followed him. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for the people that are watching me. Lord, I thank you because today, you are going to minister to every one of them. Because by your word, you lift up people and you bring that which has not been there. Because your word is creative. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Now, I have said that I'm speaking the subject, uh, Opinions for Great Harvest. Every business person, uh, when they begin, they begin their business, they would want to see the profit, and that is what I call harvest. And so even a farmer, when he go to his farm, even to put in effort, he is uh, waiting and he is uh, anticipating uh, to get a harvest. Even our God has invested in us and he is also expecting an harvest uh, from that which he has done to us. And I believe that before we finish this, 
you are going to get something that is going to help you that this year of 2024 you are going to get an harvest although there is an enemy who challenges the people of God so that he will make sure that they are not going to get the harvest that is expected of them but God is faithful every time people are going through challenge God will send his word and the word of God can turn everything around to make sure that you are going to get that which God has uh, intended you to get in Jesus name and so uh, I begin by uh, telling you that obedience remains the currency that God uses in the realm of the spirit for mankind to get the result that he intended to get. So obedient, you cannot walk with God until you learn to obey his voice. In fact, faith comes by hearing and hearing the voice of God or the word of God in the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So the moment you hear the word of God, you hear the voice of God, and you obey that voice. That voice and that word comes with the capacity to turn things around for your benefit as a man of God in Jesus' name. The Bible says uh, Peter uh, was a professional fisherman together with his colleagues. And this one night, they went to fish in, the, uh, in Galilee, but they caught nothing. They spent the whole night working, but they got nothing. You see, there is a profit for every work. But sometimes you do, uh, you put a lot of effort, but you don't see any the result. Today, I have come to tell you that even when there are no results, there is one that can help you to get the result. The moment you, you, you call upon his name, the moment he appears because he is seeing what mankind are going through. And every time God has seen what people are going through, people are suffering, people are putting a lot of faith, they are putting a lot of effort, they are working day and night, and at the end of the day, they get nothing. God comes in, he steps into what they are doing to help them to get the results that will bring glory to God and will bring blessing to the humanity. And so when humanity is going through challenge, God comes with a kingdom need. And when you respond to the kingdom need, then that kingdom responds to whatever you are doing. And it turns things around that even when what you have been doing in a natural way, it responds with the supernatural and your life begins to turn around that whatever people see as natural, you operate it with the supernatural power. And whatever is looking like a supernatural, you do it as a natural because of the word of God. Somebody say amen. So the Bible says, Peter, together with his colleagues, they spend the whole night but in the morning, they had nothing to show. And they went to wash their nets. They began to wash their nets. Because sometimes, what makes us not to get the results that we are expecting from God, it is because of something called sin. Because when development has come in your life, the devil will take the advantage. And the sin in the realm of the spirit is like a divine. It, it opens a door for the devil to fix and, you know, to, to torment the people of God. That it looks like God has forgotten them. But our God does not forget. He knows us and, uh, he, you know, he has, he has a good plan for every one of us. So Peter was washing their nets. And I challenge you this, uh, this year of 2024, maybe what you've been doing, you're not getting the results that you have been expecting. I challenge you 
to wash your net, to wash yourself. And we wash ourselves by the blood of Jesus Christ. Wherever you call upon the name of Jesus, his blood washes us as white as snow. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 18, even if your sins are as, as you know, as red as crumbs from, the Bible says he will wash them white as snow. Hallelujah. And when Peter and his colleagues were washing their nets, Jesus steps on the scene. And when he appeared, he appeared with a kingdom need. And I thank God because there were so many people who were pressing that they may hear the voice of God. They wanted to hear what heaven is saying. They wanted to hear what God is saying. They wanted the result in their, in their life. Some of them were sick and they wanted to be healed. Some of them, they had gone through tough storms of life and they wanted help from heaven. And Jesus had come with that help. And the moment he appeared there, Peter, according to the, according to the program of men, was not in the plan. But when God has located you, it does not matter what has been a protocol because he breaks every protocol so that he can help you and receive the glory as you enjoy the blessing. The Bible says, while Peter was there, Jesus identified uh, the boat that belongs to Peter. And uh, you know, he beckoned and called him and he told him uh, that to, to use, that he is going to use his boat. And uh, Peter responded to the kingdom need. When the moment he out of the kingdom need, he responded and they gave the boat. And when he gave the boat, Jesus stepped in the boat and he also instructed him. He told Peter, push me inside. Put, push me a little, a little bit. Peter, remember, he was discouraged. He was disappointed. He needed an encouragement. And now the Lord has come with a kingdom need. Peter pushed him. And Jesus did what he had come to do. People were healed. People were delivered. The power of God moved. People had the word of God. He taught people how they should live in the name of Jesus. And when he finished, he caught Peter. And they told him, Remember, Peter was so much discouraged that even he was not going to the place to hear the word. But that could not limit God from helping him. Our God loves us so much that even when we have failed, he will still come through to help us for our help comes from him. The Bible says, Peter, he was told by Jesus, he was given an instruction. The Lord spoke to Peter. Others had heard the old sermon. But Peter had this one word from the Lord. Lounge out into the deep for a catch. Peter said, Lord, we have toiled the whole night in this place. And we caught nothing. Now you are telling me to go deeper. Where will I get the fish? And for your information, Jesus, we don't fish during the day because the fish will see the nets and they will run away. Jesus never even repeated himself. But Peter said, Nevertheless, at your word, we will obey. God, when you are going through challenges, and it is time for your great harvest, God will speak a word. The moment you obey the word of God, that word, even in your dying moment, it will lift you up. This word, when you obey it, 
even in your sickness, it comes with the healing power because the word of God is the God himself. You know Jesus is the word of God. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was what? And the word was with God and the word was God. And the word turned and it became flesh. I have come to bring this word. His name is Jesus Christ. The moment he stepped to where you are, he turns three things around. The moment you hear his voice and you obey the voice that he has spoken, you begin to see things happening in your life the way you have never seen them happen. The word of God sometimes, when he speaks, it cannot make sense to our five senses because God is beyond the five senses. But the moment he has spoken, his word carries power. When you obey it, you get great harvest. Peter obeyed the word. And the moment he casted his nets, he went to the deeper. My brothers and my sisters, there is something you, you need to go deeper. You need to go deeper in God. You need to know Jesus in a deeper way. You need to understand him. Because sometimes we think that God is like man. We are living in times when people see things. Somebody has been blessed with a car. Somebody has been blessed uh, with a land. A shamba somewhere. You will hear them testify and say that they have seen the Lord. But I have come to submit to you that God is not names and God is not things and the things are not God. God is God by himself. The Bible says that when Peter obeyed, he got so much fish that the nets begin to break. And even the ship began to sing. He beckoned his friends, colleagues, who were also disappointed, who were also discouraged, who had also caught nothing. You see, when they obeyed the word, even the creation began to obey them. The moment you obey God, the creation begins to obey you. Until you obey God, even men will never listen to you. But when you obey what he has told you, the creation begins to obey you. The fish began to call one another because they saw the word that Peter obeyed. They saw the word and they came to that obedience. Every time we obey, we see the results. Isaac, one time he wanted to go to Egypt. And the Lord spoke to him, he told him, don't go down to Egypt like your father Abraham. Where you are, so, and you are going to get a great harvest. He obeyed the, the word of God. The moment he obeyed the voice, even the land obeyed him. And he, in that year, he got a hundredfold. My brothers and my sisters, tonight I have come to challenge us to begin to obey. We have been obeying people. There are so many people that obey men more than they obey God. Even when God has spoken, somebody else will come with another version of their words. And they will tell you this is the way it should be done. And when you obey them, you don't get the results. Why? You cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you, you cannot say that God has failed you. It is you who has not obeyed God. When you obey God, you get the great harvest. Why? That word of Jesus to Peter, it carried the grace. There were laws of fishing. There were principles of, of fishing. But the word of God, the moment it has come, it suspends all the laws and releases grace to help you at the time of your need. Somebody say amen. When you obey the word, it releases grace. 
that will lift you above the laws that has been put in place because this world is governed by laws. Laws that have been made by men. Laws that have been made even by principalities and demons. But the word of God is above all the laws. I speak to you because I am expecting that God is going to give us a great harvest in his kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In whatever you are doing, God is going to intervene and it is going, he is going to bring forth as you obey his voice, as you obey his word, you are going to see the result that you have never seen. Peter, he had never seen his net be breaking out. But when he obeyed, he got net breaking and the ship sinking blessing. When he got all this, he ran to Jesus together with his friend and they bowed down. When the blessing of God has come for the great harvest to continue, because there are people when they have been blessed just a little while, they run away from the Lord. But when you obey, go back to him. Because as you keep on obeying his voice, you keep on harvesting much, much, and much more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank God because he is faithful and he is going to give us a great harvest this year, 2024, in the name of Jesus Christ. And before I wind up, I want to welcome you to believe in him. You know, you cannot, sometimes you cannot, the enemy will block you. We, you, the enemy will blinden you so that you will not even understand the voice of the Lord because of sin. Sin will block your ears that you cannot hear and understand the voice of God. And so if you are, you, maybe you are there and you are not even born again, today you can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and when you believe because all oh, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus Christ, by the love of God, he sent his only begotten son that whatsoever will believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died because of our sins. He died on our behalf. He was rejected for us to be accepted. You can believe in him. If you are there, you are watching me, and you are saying, today, I repent my sins, and I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, so that he may save me. I will lead you in this uh, uh, repentance prayer. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I've heard your word. I've heard your voice. I repent of all my sins. And I believe that you died for my sins. And now, I receive you in my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for, for forgiving my sins and saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer or you also have some need, please, you can contact me with the number that is on Kingdom TV just, uh, just at the bottom. You can contact me. We are in Omoja 3 and we are going to walk this journey together. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Have a great harvest this year, 2024. Shalom.